Okay, so hello everyone, welcome back. So this is module three of HTML tutorial series. And in this module, we will see the first, how to create a first HTML page. And we'll also see the most commonly used controls in HTML. So let's get started. Now to get started with HTML, I want to create a folder where I'll be creating HTML files. And that's my working folder. So what I'll do is I'll go to my computer, D drive. So I have courses, HTML Java, click on this HTML. And you can also create a folder of your choice, D drive or C drive, somewhere create a folder. And I want to create this as new folder and write here my HTML files. So just a folder for uh, keeping it as a reference for future. So I just created D drive, HTML, my HTML files. So you can also create something in C drive or whatever drive you have and just be organized. Now in this folder, I want to create HTML files. So let's get started. The editor that we are using is Visual Studio Code. Let me open Visual Studio Code. So I'm just typing Visual Studio Code. You can see here, click on this. That'll open Visual Studio Code. And yes. Now you can see here, first time it just opened with a welcome page. I don't want this page, I'll close it. Now, if you want to increase or decrease, you can press Control minus or Control plus to increase zoom in, zoom out. Now, by default, you might be seeing a dark theme or um, now if you, if you want to change the theme of this, you can click on the settings or manage and here you have colored theme. So you can select theme like some people like, like dark theme and where you can, um, now this is the working folder that I created and I'll create file, new file. And by default, you'll find untitled one. So let me save it, file, save. Now I want to save it in my computer that I created. I want to select here HTML. I'm selecting HTML. And I'll write this here as program1.html. Now I want to save it in, in, in this folder. So what I'll do is I'll copy this folder, right click on this copy, go to here and and right click on this paste, enter. Now I want to save this file program1.html in this folder, click on save. Now you can see here, this is a dark theme that we are using. And if I want to increase the font size, I have to press control plus. So you can see here I'm increasing the font size. And if I want to zoom out or zoom in, so control minus will take you to reduce the font. So let me increase the font. Now, HTML is all about tags. Now, what is a tag? TAG tag. So I have to type here, see here the IntelliSense of Visual Studio Code is helping me to write the code. Now I'll just type here HTML and close it. Now see here, so this is called opening tag and this is called closing tag. And the root tag for HTML files should be HTML. And now inside this, I'm typing here head tag and inside the HTML, I'm typing this body tag. So this is the default basic HTML file should have root tags as HTML tags and head tag and body tag. Now, normally in head tag, we'll have script files and title tag. Now, if I put title right here, my first page. Now, whatever you put inside this title tag, that will be displayed in the browser title when you open it in the browser. Now, in the body tag, I'm writing here, welcome to HTML tutorial series. Now, that's it. Now, let me save it. So the dot in Visual Studio indicates that the file is not saved. Now, in case if you don't like this dark theme, you can change the theme that you like. You can click on this and color theme. So you can select a light color version like this. So you can see here showing light color. So depending on your interest or favorite color that you want, you can select the theme there. Now, now what I have to do is I just need to save it. So this, this dot here indicates that the file is not saved. So let me save it. So I'll go to file or save. Or I can also, without doing file save, I can also press control S. Click on save, the file is saved. Now let's see how it looks like in the browser. Now what I'll do is I will uh, go to the folder and I have the file here. Then right click on this, open in Google Chrome. 
Now let me close the previous tabs. Now let's see how this looks like. See here guys. Now whatever code I have typed in Visual Studio Code and I just opened it in Chrome browser you can see how it's looking like. So whatever I typed in the title tag inside this title that is getting displayed in the title here of the browser. There's a Chrome browser output I'm seeing here. And inside the body, what I've typed here, you can see this here. Welcome to HTML tutorial series. So when a browser sees HTML code, it will convert the HTML code to like this. Okay. So now we'll see some of the most commonly used controls in HTML. Let's get started. Now, if you see here in most of the websites, these are the controls or input controls that we use in any website. Now, if you see here, so this, is a text box. So when you see in, in application forms, etc., you see something like this. First name followed by some text box. So that is a text box. And this is a password box. When you're typing something, you will not see what you type, but you will see some dots. So that is called a password box. And this multi-line text box is called text area. And this is called a drop-down list. And this is called a radio button. And this is called a checkbox. And this is called a button. Now I'll repeat once again. This is a text box. This is a password box. This is text area. This is a drop down list. This is a radio button. This is checkbox. And the difference between radio button and checkbox is that in radio button, you just want to select one option. And in checkbox, you might need to select multiple options. And the last one is called a button. This is a button, right? Now let's see what's the code for each control. Now for a text box, the code is input type is equal to text. Input type equal to text is for a text box. And for a password box, if you want to display like this, input type equal to password. Now for text area, you have to give text area is a tag name. Here this is called in HTML, this is called tag and this is called attribute. So this is input tag and type equal to text will tell that it's a text box. This is input tag and type equal to password will tell that this is called attribute. Will tell that it's a password box. Now for text area, the tag itself is text area, not input. So text area, rows is equal to four. That means you'll get here one, two, three, four rows. And calls equal to 20 means you can actually type here 20 characters like this. That is calls 20. So and closing text area. Now for a drop down list, the tag is select and inside this you need to have option tags. And for those options here, it is getting displayed here select. And this is how it displays in the browser. Now I'll explain once again when I'll do it in Visual Studio Code. Now for radio button, input type radio. For checkbox, input type checkbox. For button, input type button. Now what we'll do is we'll type, we'll create a simple HTML form in, in Visual Studio Code and see how it looks like in the browser. Let's get started. Okay, now welcome back. Now here, what I'll do is I will create new file called application.html. Now let me close this file, new file, and I will save it file, save, save. And it's showing in the same folder, my HTML files and select your HTML. And I want to save this as application.html. So I'm saving this as application.html. Now here, as usual, the root tag is HTML and we'll have head section and we'll also have body tag. Now what I need is I need here first name. So first name and adjacent to this, I need a text box. We have seen input type is equal to text. Normally we put attributes in double quotes. So input type equal to text. And for every control to identify it, we will give an ID tag. So I'll write here ID is equal to txt fn. So normally for all the controls ID, we prefix the control. What is a control? It's a text box. So txt fn stands for first name. So that's how we naming standards we follow. Uh, type of the control followed by purpose of the control. Now I'll just close it. Now. After that, I need password. So that's what we have seen in the previous um, explanation password box. I'll just write input type is equal to password, P-A-S-S-W-R-D password. 
and ID this is a password box PWD and purpose is just password so I'll just write here password and close it this ID is your choice you can give whatever you want now the next one I need is address so I'll just write here address and for address we have seen multi row text area so I'll write here text area and I have to give some ID for it ID is equal to text area it's TA space TA and address and I have to give rows rows is equal to 5 in double quotes and calls is equal to I'll just give 30 now let's close it now let's see how it looks like in the browser so dot here indicates that it's not saved let's save this control s let's see in the browser how it looks like go to the browser I just need to open it so go to folder right click on this application.html open with Google Chrome now you can see here it's looking everything in the same line so we are saying first name we are saying password and address everything in the same line so in HTML if you want to push it to the next line you have to use a tag called BR tag so BR stands for break it will go to the next line now what I'll do is I'll just put after this control first name I'll put BR tag and here also I'll put BR tag and here also I'll be putting BR tag remember BR is that self closing tag you don't have to put a closing tag again and you just leave it as it is so now let's see how it looks like I'll give one more BR tag so that so let's see how it looks like with a single BR tag so I'll just refresh it so you can see this is okay but the controls are looking um, attached to each other so I just need to give one more space so I can give one more BR it will increase the line space so now giving one more break here control C control V I'm giving one more break here done so now what I'll do is now I'll save this let's see how it looks like yeah it's good so first name password and see here password when I type I'm not able to see it and address I gave I gave here you can see rows I gave as five so that means a B C D E so I can see five rows I can type it and calls 30 means I can type here each row I can type here up to 30 characters okay so that's about text area and then we need something called for a drop down list let's take I want to select branch or I'll write here I'll add now a couple of um, uh, BR tags I've already added so I'll write here branch and this we have seen select select and is for drop down list I can give some ID is equal to I'll give here DDL stands for drop down list and branch so normally we give the ID all IDs we are giving like what is the control and what is the purpose of it password is the per control and password is the actual purpose of it and here I have written uh, TA is a text area purpose of its address DDL is the control drop down list purpose is branch so that's how we give the naming standards now inside the select we have to write options so option I'll be giving here um, select dot dot that's how you have to display the first one now option spelling wrong so let's do it once again option and I'll write here um, select dot dot now let's close this option now I'll just copy this so that I can quickly do it so now right click on this copy and paste it here we're done so now I'll write in here um, I'll be writing here um, electronics electronics as one branch and here I can put computer science CS computer science engineering and I'll also put here the mechanical engineering which um, so enough for now we have added three branches here so let's see how it looks like in the browser let's save it let's go to the browser and right click on this browser and open with Google Chrome Now you can see here it's showing branch and you can see here it's you can select the branch here so this control is called drop down list and we have added options inside option tag and the tag for drop down list is select okay so not bad so we'll we'll try to beautify this later right we'll try to add some styles and colors later now let's go back 
Now we have added a drop down list. Now let's put some a gender. Let's try, we, we need to learn some gender. We need to add some gender here. So I'll put here gender. And before this, I'll put one couple of BR tags so that this will show in the next line. Now for gender, you need to select only one option. So we have to give something called radio button. So now I'll write here input type is equal to radio. And I'll give some here. One thing that you have to remember is you have to give the same name. One more thing you have to give. Anyway, I'll give ID, RD, um, RD mail. And I'll just close it and type here mail. And now I'll type here input. Type is equal to radio. That's for radio button and ID is equal to RD, RD female. I'll close it. Right female. Now let's see how it looks like. Let's save this. Let's go to the browser and you can see the browser here. So let me refresh it. You can see here gender. I can see male and female but the problem is I'm ending up selecting both options which I don't want. So if you want to select only because you need to relate all of them all these radio buttons belong to the same control where you want to select only one option. So you have to give the same name for all these controls. So you have to add a name attribute for these controls. Now what we'll do is let's go back and we'll type here the same name. So name is equal to RD gender. So I have to give the same name so that these controls are grouped. So name is equal to RD gender. Now, now having same name attribute for all these radio buttons will tell that these are linked and you can, you'll only have to select one option. Now let's save this. Let's go back and refresh it. Now when I click on this, I click on this, see here, I'm only selecting one option. Right, that makes sense now. Now, now I want to give, uh, now I want to select multiple options where for hobbies. Let's take, I'll put here hobbies. I'll write here input type is equal to checkbox and I'll put here ID is equal to CHK cricket and just put here cricket and <clears throat> now I'll put here yeah after this I'll ju I just need to add a couple of BR tags let's put it here and here I'll be writing again input type equal to checkbox and ID is equal to CHK chess. And I'm giving some hobbies here. And now let me copy this. Control C, Control V. And I'll write here input type check caroms. I'll be putting here caroms. Now let's see how this looks like. I'll save it. Let's go back to the browser. Refresh it. Now you can see here, click on this. So I can select here. This is okay. Now, now, now I want to have one button here for saving. Let me put this. Now I'll go back here and I'll add a couple of BI tags. Now I'll write here um, input type is equal to button, input type equal to button and ID is equal to BTN save. And if you want to display something on the button, you have to write here value is equal to save. Now let's save it. Now I'm, I, you can see the dot here indicates is not saved. Let's save this control S. Now let's see how it looks like in the browser. Now right click on this application, open with Google Chrome. You will see here there is a button. So these are the basic HTML controls that are most frequently used and all of you should know these controls. And this is a text box, this is a password box, this is a text area, this is a drop down list, this is a radio button, this is a checkbox, this is a button. Now one thing we have to keep in mind is for radio buttons we have given the same name attribute so that all these radio buttons are related. Okay, so I hope you are clear with doing this. Um, simple HTML controls. In the next module, we'll see the most commonly used tags in HTML. Thank you and see you in the next module.